Hello, you guys. Welcome back to another fun little coffee chat with my friend Catherine Edwards. And today we are going to be talking about um, this, the 60 day shadow work challenge that starts this Saturday. And cool. teachers versus cult leaders, <laughs> kind of. Oh, such a big one, such a big one, and very, very timely, I think. Yes. And before we get into that topic at hand, guys, I'm just going to let you know. So if you have not signed up for the 60 day challenge and you want to sign up for the 60 day challenge, you are going to have to email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com. I will put that email address down in the description box below. Um, if you did email me, but you haven't heard back, give it like 10 hours because I have to go through them all. But if you still didn't hear back, email me again. Um, also, I know that some people think are under the impression that if they did the 30 day challenge back in November, that I was just going to send them the 60 day challenge no, no 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 you have to email me for it i can't i don't have a mailing list it's just coming through the, the actual gmail account so if you were under that impression that the template was just going to be sent to you you have to email me again and then i'll send it and also i don't want to bombard people's emails with a 60 day template if they, if they don't want to do it so um and, and i've also gotten questions so if you have a friend or family member same as the 30 day challenge it's never too late to join so if it gets past saturday and someone says i want to do it have them reach out to me. Great. Fantastic. This template can be used over and over and over again. It's mailed to you. So it doesn't, you don't have to stick to everything that's lined up with every day. You can shift it as you need to shift it. It's no big deal. Um, but you do have to email me for it um, to get the template. But before that being said, before we get into the discussion at hand, I do just want to show you guys something here quickly. So day one is on Saturday, this Saturday, January 21st. Normally we don't uh, start challenges on a Saturday because Saturday is typically the rest day but because of what we're trying to do astrologically with some dates we had to start on Saturday with that being said Emmy Simpson our friend Emmy Simpson who is one of uh, like Catherine is one of the sponsors one of the sponsoring channels in the in the template or in the 60 day challenge she is going to be offering a group Reiki class it's a private class it's not on camera um, this class will help you establish your intention and prepare your energy for the 60 days to come if you would like to participate this class starts at 2 p.m. PM Eastern time. So what Catherine's five hours ahead of us over in England. So that would be 7 p.m. for the UK. If you're an hour behind, that's so make sure it lines up that it's 2 p.m. lined up with the Eastern time. Now I asked Emmy this morning if this class was a free class, what what was it going on? And she said that this was going to be a donation class. So if you want to donate $5, that ten dollars whatever if you can't donate right now it's totally fine come anyway she said if you're not financially in the in the position to donate then all she asks is that you pay it forward and you just do something kind for someone else that day okay emmy's amazing she's definitely not somebody who's going to turn anybody away so um and she's going to be doing these more frequently these uh these group reiki classes so she's awesome she's done reiki on me so if that's something you want to do the zoom link is in the template i will be placing it up on my uh, community tab Friday evening uh, Eastern Standard Time so the link will be there as well and yeah and there's so much stuff to do I mean it's uh, I printed this out and it was like a freaking novel that, <laughs> that I printed amazing, out <laughs> so all right so Catherine where do we start where do we start with this shadow work and we were talking for a long time off camera this morning and um, I am going to be starting to cover some cults are high controlled organizations on my channel. Um, I know that when people venture into spirituality, they're looking for a community. A lot of times when people start to go on a spiritual journey, the people in their lives maybe have different belief systems and so they feel like an oddball and they just wanna feel normal and so they'll reach for different communities. And unfortunately, because humans are vulnerable, um, a lot of times people end up being in very dangerous situations with, um, with a manipulation from a high controlled organization. And this can be done on, I covered a cult. I filmed it yesterday. It released a couple days where it started on YouTube. So mm -hmm. we're going to be covering Nexium. We're going to be covering Scientology, all these different um, organizations that had really good people that got caught in them. And so that's something Catherine and I, I think a lot of us kind of have some concerns about this. We don't want people handing over their powers. So Catherine, I'm going to ask you, in your experience, in the many, many, many years that you've been working on yourself and your learning lessons, your setbacks, your breakthroughs, if you could just tell a new person who's new to this journey, what is the biggest difference, in your opinion, between a teacher and a cult leader? 
It's such a good one. And I think it's very complex because the people that are cult leaders have a very good understanding of how the human psyche works. So they can be incredibly manipulative and very, very good at covering their tracks as well. But some of the red flags I look for are when there's an over control, if you're not allowed to disagree yeah. with the thing. So this whole great awakening, spiritual awakening, whatever you want to call it, to me, one of the key things is, is to encouraging a questioning mind. And yes, there are different ways that you can ask questions. So you can ask questions with a genuine willingness to want to hear the answers, or you can ask questions in a telling closed fashion. Um, so if the if the teacher you're working with is not encouraging questioning of a lot of what's being taught, then that would be a red flag to me. The other red flag would be where the boundaries are really crossed between um, being a teacher and having that professional relationship and then trying to interfere in other areas of their lives or trying to get involved in their personal life, etc. Now, I will say there's a but for this because I've been teaching various different modalities for a long while and some of my students have become really good friends, yeah. but there's no controlling there. There's no saying you can do this or you can't do that. So I teach quite a few different therapies for people, but I don't ever say, yes, they to pass, they have to reach a certain level of competence to make sure that they're not dangerous and they know what they're doing but then I absolutely encourage them to put their own spin on it and to to put their own energy into it and do things their way so with the cult leaders I think as soon as you start to see people that are prying into your personal life um that are trying to separate you at all from other modes of thoughts or other people um, and even teachers that are not practicing what they preach. So if you're working with a teacher, and let's give some obvious things. So say you're doing a nutrition course, you would expect your teacher to understand and be demonstrating that they're eating healthy themselves. If I'm doing a yoga course, I would expect the, the teacher to have a very um, well-established low yoga practice themselves, etc. If yeah. people come to see me and I'm teaching about how to look after animals properly and all my animals are unhealthy and unhappy, then I'd expect them to run a mile, you know? Yeah. Um, so those are some of the key things. And I think at the moment it's very hard because – we've sort of all everyone who's been speaking up and trying to sort of shine a light on some of the control that's been happening have been encouraging people to do their own research but you started off very clearly a lot of people are feeling isolated from their current family groups friendship groups communities etc and therefore that puts you in a very vulnerable state to be taken advantage of and one thing I would encourage people to do is not to be ashamed if they feel they've seen this. Ask someone. You and I often bounce ideas off each other. There's a big difference between gossiping about someone in terms of talking about someone when they're not there with a view of trying to influence someone else to think the same as you or saying hey Bryce I've got this uneasy feeling what do you think is it me is it them getting someone else's opinion so anytime someone tries to isolate you as well from getting other opinions that's a huge red flag huge I will say that because that's one thing I noticed um, that's very a lot of these different high controlled organizations will have different subjects that they're revolved around like you can find it in the fitness world you can find it we find it a lot in the spiritual world you can yeah. find it in the medical world right it's everywhere but like a lot of these groups will not let you seek outsource other other modalities and that's like in our shala where we teach we have a stack we have a box full of all these different business cards of of good trauma therapists we know of good reiki healers we know of good nutritionists we know ayurvedic doctors rolfers you name it the whole gamut we have all these different business cards of other healers that are not associated with our shala we're yeah. not we're not kickback we're not giving each other money these are just other people that have other modalities of healing. And when it comes to some of, you know, in, in the yoga world, when things really get triggered from past traumas, I um, think we've done a really good job of listening to the student and seeing what's happening with the body and saying, this is past, this is out of my wheelhouse. I really think you should consider going to see a therapist or if the therapy isn't comfortable for you, go to see a Reiki healer, just 
I'm going to pass you off to, it's almost like sending someone to a specialist, right? You know, yeah. and I've noticed that a lot of these high controlled organizations, if you dared to go step outside of the realms of the organization, it's disconnection. And that's, that's a problem. And I think you're really, you're really, you're right about the, 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 the boundary of the lines being blurred. Um, you know, I've been very lucky in my life. I've had incredible teachers that never crossed that line, but I can see where that line can be crossed. Now I have also on the flip side of this been in narcissistically abusive relationships, which a narcissistically abusive, abusive relationship as Andrew Gold on his podcast said, it's a cult of one. Yeah. It's the same mechanisms, just an organization versus one person. Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells around the leader? Do you feel like if you fall out of the graces with the leader that you're going to be punished? I've never felt like I was going to fall out of good graces with my teacher. I've, I've asked, you know, my teacher, so I'll give you an example. My teacher in India is very strict. He's a very hard teacher, but he has boundaries. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get involved in our personal lives. If you go to ask him a question, if you're going through, let's say you're going through a divorce, or let's say something's happened in your life that's really big. And it's changing the direction of your life and you need some guidance. And so you go, you book a meeting, one-on-one -on -one personal meeting with Sherat. First of all, Sherat will never speak about what you say to him outside of that room ever, nor will he ever hold it against you or bring it up again in the, in the yoga room. Second of all, he never tells you what to do. He literally talks to you in metaphor through the, and lets you make the decision. He'll say, well, what do you think you should do? And that's huge. That's huge. You know, he'll teach us about brahmacharya, which brahmacharya is basically like, don't be a slut. Like, don't sleep around with a bunch of people because it's karmic. You're sharing karma. But with that being said, he has no idea who any of us are boinking. He doesn't know, like, what our romantic life is like. He doesn't ask. I don't think he cares. You know, he never, I was looking back at Keith Ranieri's videos where Keith Ranieri is laying on the sofa, sofa and, like, hanging out with his clients. You would never see Sherat do that. Mm -hmm. He's always very professional. You know, very professional, very, it's very much. And, and I will say too, another good thing he does is if you have a couple, a husband and wife that are practicing together at the shala, let's say they're both authorized teachers as well. And they've applied to assist Sherrod at certain shifts to assist them because that's a great learning opportunity. Well, let's say that I'm practicing in the shala in, in, in India and my boyfriend is assisting Sherrod at that same time that I'm practicing or vice versa. My boyfriend can't go anywhere near me. Mm -hmm. He has to stay on the other side of the room and vice versa. If I'm assisting and he's practicing, I, I can't go anywhere near him. I have to stay on the other side of the room. There's a boundary there because you can't blur those lines. You mm -hmm. can't blur those lines between teacher and student. Um, and, and that's, and I think that's important because I mean, look at Keith Raniere. He was boinking like every single ma manipulating the women through sex, through all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's, I know another, another thing you have to look out for some of the big ones are sleep deprivation. A lot of these people will demand so much from you that you lose sleep. Um, we get up early for Ashtanga, but my teacher wants us in bed by like 2 PM in the afternoon. And I'm not joking. Like he literally will get, if he, if, if you don't get enough sleep, he'll say something to you, like, you need to get more sleep so that you're, you're mentally stable. Uh, they'll, they'll restrict your food, your food mm -hmm. intake. So they're doing things slowly over time to dismantle your cognitive skills. And, and it's, it's, yeah. an, and they'll gaslight you too. Like if you're in a situation where you're not comfortable with something going on and you say, no, they will, a, a leader will kind of gaslight you into doing what you're not comfortable with. And if I was in KPJY in India and there was a, a posture I was struggling with and Sharat was strict on me doing it, if I was showing that I was hesitant, he would pull back and say, why are you feeling hesitation? Why are you fearing? He would be strict, but he would not force. Yeah, there's a big difference. And I'm laughing at a couple of things because one, Without giving too much away, though, well, luckily the video that I did talk about this was on my first YouTube channel that got deleted. So my good friend Kelly Rivers, lovely, lovely, love you, Kelly. So her and I met when we were working with a coach back in 2019 before this happened. And then we went on a retreat in America. And that person running those retreats was actually bonking a lot of the people and everything. And it was so obvious when you went out there. It was so obvious. And in terms of was it dangerous cult, but this had a really damaging impact 
on a lot of the people who he was coaching and you know people undermine it and say how can these people be so silly well the whole point is when people often try decide to do shadow work or self-development work or work with a therapist or a coach it's normally because they're looking to upgrade an area of their lives or deal with some trauma so then don't bash the people that are looking to to help themselves when they're in a vulnerable state it's so easy to to put the blame in the wrong place and when a couple of the women did speak up about it, they got absolutely hung, drawn and courted. And it was disgusting to see because people were saying, well, you're an adult. They d- they didn't rape you. You know, we consented. Well, what is consent? Now, I, I think this issue, the reason I'm asking is I've been in so many situations over the last couple of years where if you dare to question, let's take an example with Mr. T. If you dare to question or start to have a debate about why certain things have been done, then you're hung, drawn and quartered or your count does not a proper patriot or you're not a real, you know, card patriot. So there's a lot, even in this community, oh, absolutely, absolutely, where you are yes. not allowed to question certain things and whether it's about people or whether it's about, you know, sort of the organisation or the decisions that are being made. And that's a huge red flag for me as well. And it's not coming from Mr T, by the way, it's coming from the people that are trying to control and manipulate you to think and just parrot fashion repeat what they're saying to make them look important. And I'm telling you, it terrifies me. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to offer these shadow work challenges is because I want people to do things on their own to regain that sense of critical thinking. Listen, God, the universe, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, gave you a brain. The brain is a very important function of your body, just like your heart, just like your liver, just like your colon. And part of the critical part of critical thinking skills is critical thinking, critical thinking. And and yes, and I, I know, Captain, we've talked about this a lot. There are a lot of red flags in our truth or community of people on YouTube who are behaving like cult leaders. And it's terrifying. And I know, and I see it because when you when you come out of this, we're living through such a a very interesting timeline where so many of us see all these things and we're seeing things and we're desperate and people think we're crazy. And so we're clinging to the yeah. fantastical. We're clinging. Some of the things people are saying on their shows are so batshit crazy and out there and people are clinging to it. And then if someone questions that, they're considered a bad person just because they questioned it absolutely you know, we're, we're losing that that touch of reality and you know even with the template itself i've said this with shanti and mornay who are also sponsors a bunch of us you'll see it on the welcome list all the channels that are sponsoring this shadow work challenge i set up for you is very it's very thorough but with that being said i'm not as the person who predominantly wrote it i'm not asking you to do everything on the on the page it's simply for you any of the questions i've asked you for your journaling it's just for you i don't want to see your journals that is just for you. And if you feel, and I say multiple times in this shadow work challenge, if it gets over overwhelming, reach out for help to a therapist, to a Reiki healer, whoever you feel comfortable with, and they can refer you if they need to, you know, and, and it's, it's um, like I've said before with the, the food deprivation, like I'm not, I even say in the beginning that I don't really necessarily want people weighing themselves because I feel like that can be distracting and you're not your weight. And the only thing we talk about with food on this channel, I'm encouraging you to not eat meat, but we're also just looking at the dosha system, you know, but I even put in the challenge to get a proper diagnosis of your dosha. You need to go to an Ayurvedic doctor so they can take your pulse, Mm. right? I'm pretty good at diagnosing people, but I'm not an Ayurvedic doctor, right? So if you, you need to go see, I want to outsource you to someone who is trained in this. And so these are red flags. Look at the charismatic leader. Cause that's also huge, huge with cults is that. That's with, a very good point, actually. That's narcissism. So someone can have charisma and be super cool on camera and all that kind of stuff. But charismatic leaders are bigger than life people. And they're usually people that, that other people want to lionize they want a hero worship. You should not. And that's different from having respect. Now, I have respect for my teachers. I have a lot of respect for my teachers. I give them a lot of credit for what they've taught me. I don't lionize them, though. Mm-hmm. I don't go and grovel at their feet. I understand Sharat in India, my teacher in India. I have a very, I'm very critical of the fact that he's an Indian, a Brahmin Indian, and I'm a white girl from America. 
There are some cultural differences in our lives. And so I'm not going to go to Sherrod and ask him his opinion on something that's culturally different from how he was raised and I was raised because I'm probably not going to agree with them. And his advice or his metaphors are probably not going to apply to to America, you know, but that's my critical thinking skills. I still respect the hell out of him when it comes to him being the Parm guru as my teacher. But and that's that interesting. Sorry, I just wanted to say, just point out there, hold that point, folks. Is the fact is, is when you are going to a teacher or anyone to work you through, is being really clear with yourself. And I think it's a really good exercise to say about what your expectations are for that. And that is really, really important because if you're expecting your teacher to become your new best friend, then there's a, automatically a problem there. Either way, it's going to not be a great experience for you. Yeah. And that's, um, and that's this, and that's my, you know, even my, my American teacher who I would get more, more his, his lifestyle is more aligned with the cult. We're both American, right? He's from Philly. Um, David Greig, there's still, he really did a good job of like when something was going on personal in your life, he would talk to you about it, but he did a really good job of not overstepping those boundaries. Todd yeah. does a really good job with that as well, you know, and, and it's that, that we, and I will say, you know, we see it too. So in Ashtanga yoga, you know, the, 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 um, prescription is that you do this really crazy practice six days a week mm -hmm. now for somebody who is dedicated to ashtanga yoga then yes i would encourage the practice to be your main modality of healing because that's what you've committed to and that's what you want to learn from however there are some ashtanga teachers that i see as a red flag where they say you should not be doing anything else because this is your practice when students come to me as a teacher and say you know i've noticed that I like to run, but I notice that if I practice the day after I run, my hamstrings are super tight. Do you think I should give up running? Well, first of all, I can't make that decision for you because your life is your life. So what I typically say to the student is, do you enjoy running? Do you like, do you like it? Do you have fun with it? Well, yes. Then why would you give it up? So what if your hamstrings are a little bit tight? You should never be 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 giving a, your life with an organization, with a YouTube channel, with a self-help group, with a fitness group, whatever it is, a medical group. These are supposed to be practices and organizations that help you enhance your life. They should not become your life. And Absolutely. There's a guy, he's got a great podcast. It's called the Mormon Stories Podcast. And he interviews, he goes, because he left Mormonism. And he taught, he goes through a lot of this stuff. And I, list, I was listening to one of his interviews with the Teal Swan situation, her organization. And he made a really good point. He described it as a meal. When you sit down for a meal, it's about the meal. The salt and the pepper are just seasoning to make the meal taste better. It's the same thing with self-help organizations, with religion, with spirituality. Your life your experience as a human is what's important. The What you're learning from spirituality, what you're learning from medicine, what, whatever it is, that's only supposed to enhance it. It's not supposed to become your life. It shouldn't dictate every waking minute of your day. You know, I, I know in a lot of these high organizations, they will, they'll like, I know Nexium did this. I was listening that they'll say, you know, people who are close to their families, they say, oh, you're just codependent. You need to yeah. break away from your, and, and so you become so controlled by this organization where in like ashtanga yoga people are only with us for like an hour or two a day the rest of the day they're doing their thing you know that so there's these these subtle differences you know yeah and i think also there's a reason why your gut is called your second brain so you were talking about how important the brain is for critical thinking it really is and we've talked a lot about intuition but when you look at these things you're meant to be using all these signals that come to you you're not just if you're just using your brain if you're just using your intuition the whole point is you've been given all these senses all these tools to use in combination and sometimes you'll want to use some more than the others i mean you know i've had experiences where i was qualified in certain therapies and they were going to approved me to be a teacher well they did approve me to the teacher and then i got the documents through and it says i had to drop all my other therapies and it's completely ridiculous because there's never one healing modality there's never one solution there's loads this this world is absolutely full of so many options for everyone and there's loads of good different ways to heal yourself physically emotionally to contribute to the environment it's like i see it a lot in the holistic healthcare world you can get completely fanatical about it so you know i've had people that are so against vets or doctors that they'll let their children or animals suffer 
and not yeah. give them any pain relief. And I'm like, well, no, for God's sake, give your animal or your child some pain relief. Yeah. And then you can do the rest of the feeling naturally. But if they're let that line there with their leg hanging off, you've got to give the poor thing some pain relief first. You know, it's like all of these things should never be the be all and one all. When you're looking at whether it's the the religions or any belief systems, any time it becomes this is the only way, no, right. it's just right. just never happens. It doesn't. There's loads of different ways to get fit. There's loads of different ways. I get really annoyed in the. Um, I'm just about to publish a, a really good interview I did with a, a someone who's gone into a whole plant-based food eating but i'm sick to death of supposedly top health people saying it's impossible to be a healthy vegan it's very possible to be a healthy vegan not everyone wants to or or chooses to be or or should be but that doesn't mean that no one can be so that to me is another example of when you're saying it's my way is the only way it's just ridiculous to me and it's a big red flag and those are little examples but it's those little ways that they get you in and erode away your intuition and your critical thinking so that then you become very susceptible. And it's also making sure, and that's one thing I hope to, that people start to understand, when you give all your power to a charismatic leader or an organization, you're looking for them to rescue you. Mm -hmm. And the only person who can rescue you is you. A teacher's job, it's that whole saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. A teacher's job is to anchor you in the practice. I have to be very strong for my students to help them work through it, but they have to work through it. Mm -hmm. They do. And um, Guruji used to say this, and I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, he used to say, one time telling, two time telling, three time, God telling. So there yes. comes a point with good teachers or good leaders where they will walk you through the dangers. They will talk to you about things, but eventually you have to let karma play out. You have to let God tell once I'm telling, like I can tell a student just in a very easy base, like, like they're doing something on their math. That's going to hurt them. Like they're going, I can say a couple of times, like you need to not do that. Cause you're going to end up popping your shoulder out. Like let's re rework this, but if they keep doing it, eventually I have to just let it happen, you know, yeah. because that's, that's the learning experience. And when, when uh, an, a, a charismatic or uh, charismatic leader is not allowing the God telling or is using God as, a, as if they are the only voice of God, you're all, everybody's a prophet. Everyone's a medium. Everyone's that, you know, and that's what I love about like lineage based practices is that there's an, it's not saying you're not that either. It's just saying there's a process of education that you're going through to be able to understand what it is that you're delivering to the people that come after you in order to help them realize that they are that as well, you know? And so, and so that is, uh, it's just, it's just very concerning. I mean, and I, I, I get it. I get it. A lot of people watching right now, you've been excommunicated from friends and family. Perhaps you've lost your job because you didn't, you know, zappity doo da. you know, with the rest of everybody. And I get it. And that's such a very vulnerable and upsetting place to be. And then all of a sudden, this charismatic YouTube personality comes around and they, they pretend to have all the answers. And all of a sudden, you're meeting people on the internet. And it feels fans, it feels good, because you now feel supported. But be careful. Be careful because at the end of the day, it's about you. It's not about the leader. It's not about the teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. That's the teacher's absolutely. job. It is, that is a really important thing. And, and you know, you it's absolutely it's also really, really healthy to work with someone for a little bit of time and then go your separate ways. And that doesn't need to be there shouldn't be any drama in it either. That should be a sign of a great working relationship. You know, it's like when you go into your first job and you you know you go into your first job and normally you'd start at the bottom and then you gradually work your way up if you want to if that's something you want to some people choose not to and that's exactly the same as what's life's been is these relationships you step in and out of them for certain periods of time when you need it and then it's fine to walk away from that and um i think also when people are offering various different healing modalities as well you know, for me, and this is just my personal thing, it's about how do I know if I want to work with someone, do they make me feel empowered? 
yes is really really important or do they make me feel that they're going to save me <laughs> or that I have to walk on eggshells and I have to lie and I do you feel like you have to praise them I don't want anybody I'm just a person I've had an incredible life I'm so grateful for the life I've had I've gotten the opportunity to travel the world many times over and experience incredible teachers and learn about myself and I'm so happy that I now have a position to share that with people but I'm just like you I'm not, I've just, I've just got an, I just, I'm just ed educated in this area, you know? And so, and so, yeah, yeah I, I don't want people, there's, there's a difference between having respect yeah, for your teacher yeah. and, and feeling like you have to worship them. And I see my teacher gets uncomfortable when people start to like lionize him. He gets very like uncomfortable. And I'll say, that's a really good point, Catherine. Is the teacher or the leader able to let you go? without any guilt. When I, uh, uh, I was in a conference once with I mean, David Greig, I give that man, he literally was the most life-changing teacher more so than Sherat. I mean, I, David Greig, and I still keep in touch with him. He comes to Atlanta all the time to teach, you know, and at AYA do guest spots. To he's a, he's a master teacher of Ashtanga yoga. And I'm so grateful that he was my first real big teacher. Well, there comes a point when I decided that I wanted to go to KP, I wanted to apply to go to KPJAYI. At that point, I was making the decision to transfer teachers. And the thing about getting into KPJY now is that you have to have letters of recommendation. You have to have excellent experience before you can apply. And so I had to tell David that I really wanted to apply to KPJY. Can he write me a letter of recommendation? And at that point, David knew that I was he was I was moving on to Sherrod. And somebody had asked David in a conference once, how do you feel when your teachers move off to India? And he goes, I feel fantastic mm. because I it makes me emotional. It's like, I, I got to be that person that opened that door for them. I make that uh, it's really emotional. Like, and he's like, I just, I just am so grateful that I was the person that was able to show them that they can do this and follow in the steps that I, cause he lived in, he went to, he's in Indy for a long time as a younger, but he's in, I think he's close to 60 now, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that made me so emotional and see, and I genuinely felt that like when I, messaged him about applying to, to India many, many, many years ago, he was so unbelievably supportive. Mm. And even to this day, even though I'm authorized now, I can still go to him and I still venerate him as and respect him as one of my teachers. If I there's something I'm confused about, I have no problem texting him and saying, hey, I'm really what what's your advice? Mm. You know, um, and and so I just that's such a good point, Catherine, I really want to make that clear to people. If if the person that you're learning from or you're interested in or is, has this organization, if they are making you feel like you, they have to praise you and if they are, if you can't question them or if you can't, uh, if you can't transfer to someone else, if they make you feel like there's something wrong with you for that, then there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with them because Absolutely. most people, healthy minded people will respond the way David Greed did and say, I'm just honored that I got to be a part of this process. And I helped that person find this within themselves, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and yeah, David, I think I said this for you too. Like David, people question him all the time in conferences. And, and he, if he didn't know the answer to the question, he'd go, I don't know. Let me get back to you. Let me think on that. I don't know. You know, he had a he, he was so smart. His philosophy skills were incredible to teach that. But he he would let people ask him questions. And if some people, there was one question somebody asked in a conference that had to do with children. And I won't get into the specific what they actually asked because it was very deep. And David's not a parent. And David said, I can't answer that for you because I am not a parent. And that is your children. And this is your, you have to figure this out for yourself. He was very clear that, that he was not going to answer that question. And so um, just, yeah, you'll notice those things about people. You'll notice whether their ego's involved or whether they're literally just trying to help you and be strict with you because of the benefit of the, the modality they're using. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, is I think um, the difference between a teacher and a cult teacher, a teacher will always be a student. Mm -hmm. You know, as in there's no good teacher that I can ever think of that doesn't recognize that they are always a student themselves. So, yes, they might have they'll be teaching some people and things and passing it forward. And that's all I see teachers and for is it's like that gift of being able to pass it forward like the shamans of of old. You know, this yeah. is the thing don't want to lose this knowledge you want to pass it forward and each person that gets it grows with it and grows it in a positive way for everyone's benefit but every good teacher will also be continually learning themselves they never get to the stage where you think i've stopped learning 
um, quite the opposite. And that's why they like being challenged and asked questions because it opens their mind to thinking, well, actually, I don't know. What about this? What about you know, a different side of things. And it's really, really important. You know, there is no, we've said it so many times before, black and white thinking is a, is a serious problem. There yeah. is no simple answer to most solutions. And, and there's all the different shades of grey in between. And I think it's really important for people to realise that. Yeah. So, but as we wrap up, guys, I just want to go back on, look, I just want to show you again on this template. So again, with every single day, um, I'm not, I don't, I only have like yoga a few times here. I've got multiple, multiple different um, exercises for you to pick on days between different bar yoga kickboxing. So this isn't, this it's in your hands. Now, again, with all these questions that we're asking you and this, it, you don't have to answer everything. Okay. So don't, if you find yourself, so this is a good, after everything Catherine and I have spoken about, if you're someone that has the propensity to try to make other people happy here's your challenge don't try to make any of us happy try to make yourself happy if, if there comes a day and you don't all you do is you know do some warm-up exercises or something great that's what you did great awesome if there is a if there's a challenge on this challenge on one of the days that you're not comfortable with then don't do it I don't, if you're not comfortable with a, a certain, a certain challenge that I've put on this or Catherine's added or Emmy's added or Shanti's added that you're not comfortable with, then don't do it. It doesn't mean that you won't ever go back and do it again. It just means right now is not the time for you. And that's okay. You know, take your power into your own, own hands when it comes to this, because you need to start practicing. Like, where do I listen to teachers for advice on what uh, what they've learned versus where am I giving my power over? You know, here for Sunday Fun Day, let's look at this. Beginners, you have options. You can either do a 10-minute Zumba dance. You can do Jane Fonda's low-impact aerobics or sun salutations. You can, Or if you've been practicing and exercising for a while, if you just want an easier day, you pick one of those. Or you have a couple of other challenge of other suggestions down here as well. You know, so don't ever feel like you have to give up over completely give over yourself in order to have some sort of validation because at the end of the day you are with you and you alone and at the end of the day you are all a fractal of god at the end of the day we're just walking each other home and we're learning from each other so do not hand your power over to me to catherine to emmy to any of the people that are sponsoring this challenge, don't don't give your power over to any spiritualist, any YouTuber, any preacher, priest, rabbi. Don't give that power over to them because you are just as worthy as a human being as they are. They just might have more experience than you in certain as aspects. And that's that's the only that's the only type of authority they will have is sharing with you their experience and what the teaching actually is. It's up to you to then work it, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely so and my final words for me is i if you if you sort of get to a stage where you think and i i think we've all been through it certainly i have where you think is this relationship healthy is it still serving me the main thing is is do not be afraid to question it yeah and speak to someone about it and just get someone that you trust that you can speak to about it and just share your feelings and see because you know sometimes it can be we're all having a sensitive day or sometimes it's that intuition that you really don't want to ignore so don't ever feel afraid that if you've you know there's a lot of shaming i think that goes on for people that how could they be so silly to fall for this and I hate seeing that because it's, you know, it's just we're all human. There's not a single person on this planet that hasn't fallen for something at some stage. And actually, that's what they rely on. This, you know, the hiding and the shame and not wanting to admit it and not share it because that's how these things survive. So, yes. you know, good for you. If anyone recognizes they've been in this situation, good for you. You are taking your life up to the next level. Brilliant. Yeah. And I will, I will back that what you just said, Catherine, when you study cults, high demand organizations, the people in them are highly, usually highly intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't feel shamed. If you got duped into one of these things, usually people who do are really smart. And that's, I spoke to someone yesterday that's going to be coming on to talk about one of these big, uh, big organizations. And as she said, yeah, big organizations like that, they want smart people. Mm -hmm. They want smart people because it makes them look better. You never see dumbasses. 
and, and exactly because no one would then there would be no benefit to them so you know there is no shame in any of this it's just part of the lesson in life that you know we all have different lessons and if that's part of our particular lessons then quicker we learn it and move on the better exactly exactly so yeah don't feel i mean i i I've, like i said i've been lucky because my teachers have all been really healthy but i have also been in narcissistic relationships and that's the cult of one so yeah. that's even worse because i didn't have anybody else i could say well they did it too no it was just a cult of one so at that point so so yes all right you guys well once again Brilliant. Send me an email, shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com if you want to participate in the 60 days. I know um, for those who don't want to email but want to kind of participate, the evening before each new day, I will be posting the new day's challenge up. So that came out weird. So Friday night, this Friday night or afternoon, I will be putting up Saturday's challenge. Saturday afternoon, I'll put up Sunday's challenge. So first, you can always go to my community tab. Um, I don't know if uh, Catherine or the other sponsors want to do that as well. Yeah, no, um, I'm sharing it on that. And if Emmy can make sure for Saturday that she makes sure she includes so we can share about if people want to make a donation where they can donate to. Oh, absolutely. I, right after we get off, I'll text her and see if she can send me that because that Zoom link will be on the template page. I'll put it on my, so if you want to join that. And and yes, I want to reiterate because Amy en is really good about this. If you want to participate in the Zoom class, but you just do not have the money to donate right now, all she asks is that that day you just do something nice for somebody else. Just pay it for it. Okay. So um, so I don't want anybody to feel like they're, they're that's a hindrance. Um, if you can donate, donate. Five dollars, ten dollars, twenty, whatever. But if if um, but if you really can't, just do something nice for somebody else that day. So, all right, you guys. Well, good luck, everybody who's doing it. We'll be keeping in touch with you guys. We'll be going forward. I know Catherine and I have some awesome videos that I know we're going to be doing together and all that kind of stuff coming up in the future. So it's all going to be good, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye.